All right, Trendsetter Supercard of Honor is on Saturday, April the 7th from New Orleans. It's going to be a huge weekend, but you know what? Let the kingdom conspiracies begin because what we thought was going to be a battle for the six-man tag team championships between SoCal, Uncensored, and the kingdom is changed because now it's going to be Flip Gordon and the Young Bucks. And it's going yeah, to I, be... I can't take this anymore, Jeff, as a wrestling fan. I can't take that they keep changing it on me. It's, it's, it's a tease and it's not fair. I know, and uh, because of uh, their actions, uh, it left no choice for Ring of Honor enforcer Bully Ray to ban the to ban the Kingdom from all activities. And here talking about that is one of the members from the Kingdom, Vinny Marcelli. What's going on? You've got to be upset about this uh, whole situation. Yeah, uh, I kind of am. I mean, I think uh, this conspiracy thing and Bully Ray himself have gone far enough with it. Um, but uh, I think we kind of told, you know, sent that message to him on the uh, ROH 16th anniversary uh, when we decided to take it upon ourselves to, uh, you know, you know, take take a uh, take action and uh, just show up anyway. You know what I mean? We weren't yeah. even on the ROH uh, Ring of Honor 16th anniversary show uh, a year. That was a year after uh, TK had broken his leg in the same, the very same building, very same show, uh, and we weren't even on that show. So we took it upon ourselves to put us put ourselves on that show, and then he kicked us out of the building, and we didn't care about him what he had to say there either. And we ended up coming back. So I mean, he could he can do whatever he wants and try to ban us or whatever kind of rules. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to follow his rules. You know, plain and simple, I think it's gone far enough. All we wanted in the first place was a rematch for the six-man tag titles, and, you know, nobody's able to grant us that, and I don't understand it. You know, when you lose your, t- when you lose your championship, uh, you're, you are granted a championship rematch. Um, you know, it's been going on wrestling for decades or forever, and uh, we haven't been granted that that fair rematch for the six man tag titles. And it was supposed to happen at super part of honor. And, you know, once again, the legs get cut out from underneath us from our, you know, awesome enforcer there, bully Ray. So now that all of a sudden, a few weeks ago, you were on the shining wizards podcast and you were talking about, they're congratulating you on being in that title match. And actually they were talking about being in front of the largest audience in probably ring of honor history in new Orleans. And now all of a sudden to have it taken away from you guys, uh, it's gotta be disheartening. Just talk about now when you take a look at the card now and you see flip and the young bucks taking your spot, how do you feel right now inside? Um, you know, it just, it stinks, you know, cause it was, uh, you know, like you said, you know, biggest, biggest crowd in ring of honor history. Um, you know, we're talking like thousands and thousands of people, um, you know, high profile matchup rematch for our six man tag titles, um, that we never lost fairly to begin with, um, you know, a fair and square rematch that we had all lined up and, you know, again, taken away from us. So, you know, it kind of stinks to see that, um, and to be banned off the biggest show of the year, um, you know, so yeah, it kind of stinks, you know, because uh, we were we were pretty excited going into that, and you know, it's unfortunate that there is legit a uh, kingdom conspiracy. I mean, this is <laughs> can you not see it? I mean, it's written on the wall here, you know. Well, the only way you couldn't see it, Vinny, is if you're a blind man walking into a pool of water, not seeing it underneath <laughs> you. Because honestly, right. you're right; it's a conspiracy theory. It's it's people in under power, like Bully Ray, and you know the word really benefits him. He's a bully using his power to again to 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 take away something that's rightfully yours. But uh, you know, prior right. to, prior to realizing the fact that that uh, this happened and the conspiracy continues on from here, how excited were you theoretically, knowing that you were going to be part of this card? Because to me. And I've I've spoken about this with Jeff several times, especially leading up to WrestleMania weekend. I mean, this is my Christmas. I mean, you know, the, the, the you know Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving. That's great. This is my celebration. This is where all the die hardcore fans are there. How excited are, were you? Uh, and you know, a lot of things can change from this point on till till uh, SuperCard. But how excited are you to be part of those festivities and be part around that atmosphere? Uh, you know, it's it's very exciting. It's it's exciting for you know every wrestler. Um, you know, and and Supercard being one of the biggest shows uh, in New Orleans, like, you know, there's, there's no better feeling to be a part of that. 
and you know even like you know after we just you know had that that you know wild crazy match uh manhattan mayhem with uh us uh the kingdom and shane taylor versus uh the bullet club there in that manhattan mayhem match there for the main event at the hammerstein that match is just wild and crazy and it was just you know the energy in that building was was insane and you know i couldn't wait for for the super card you know because it was going to be uh, a crowd that's even bigger than that you know and i was going to even so it's just kind of you know it's, it's really exciting uh and it was a very exciting feeling to you know especially when they announced that match like, again like i said when they announced that match uh it was pretty much you know here it is here's a rematch for the six-man tag titles and it's on the biggest show that ring of honor is going to host with the biggest crowd in ring of honor history you know you know the excitement geez just in you know, I can't even explain it, you know, going into that for, you know, as a performer, it's just unreal, you know, it's, and it's, it's with Ring of Honor growing, you know what I mean? It's just it's going to get better and better. Uh, you know, now we just need to end the conspiracy and, you know, l- you know, let Bully Ray realize that, you know, we, we never lost the six man tag titles, you know, fairly, and we never got our rematch fairly. So. I'm pretty sure we will be hearing from the kingdom. I'm pretty sure that they've taken it upon themselves to uh, to be noticed, and I think that uh, I think they have something up their sleeve. Oh, yeah. But yeah, but we're we're talking to the heart. Oh yeah, this you know what I mean this is like bully Ray, bully Ray. I don't know how the other two feel about him, but I could care less what he has to say. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's you know you can make all the rules that you want, but I mean look at me. Do I really look like a rule follower? No, so, no, not at all. No, not right. at all. So, and Bully Ray doesn't even look like know, a rule maker at all either. Yeah, I, you know, I'm kind of surprised. So you, you think, know, you think a guy like him with his history, Vinny, would appreciate what you guys do? Because he was known right. to break all the rules, right? And now he's somewhat of an authority figure. I mean, how the tables have turned yeah. right now, and it's calling the kettle black. Yeah. Really, he's more of a, of a right. hypocrite. It, now I wouldn't dare say it, it to his it, face, it, but I'll say it now that he's a hypocrite. <laughs> And it goes into it goes deeper than that. Uh, Spike Dudley is actually myself and Matt Taven's trainer. He's oh. our original trainer in pro wrestling. Well, there you isn't go. Because you're with Spike Dudley, that's why. It, isn't that interesting? <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe there's some you know hatred there. Who knows? I don't know what it is, but there's definitely a conspiracy in Ring of Honor. It's been proven um, almost every week on Ring of Honor television, uh, whatever live stream. It's been proven. Um, you know, and the super card is probably the biggest, um, the, the biggest, you know, example of the Kingdom Conspiracy. You know, I mean, we're banned from the biggest show in Ring of Honor history. That's ridiculous. We're the first ever Ring of Honor six man tag team champions. All right, so we're talking to the Horror King, Vinny Marcellia. You talked about being the first ever six man tag team champions. There's been a, let's, let's, let's admit it, as, as far as tag team scene, in professional wrestling, and we'll talk about WWE. It kind of sometimes takes a back seat, and then sometimes, uh, you know, they come to the forefront. But, for example, what has Ring of Honor done so well as far as, you know, pushing the tag team division and having a six-man tag team championship, you know, uh, in the company? Why do you think there's more, I guess, more prestige now at Ring of Honor with their titles? Um... I, I just think, uh, I really think it's just something different. You know what I mean? Um, I, I feel like, you know, especially the six man tag team, uh, you know, division and, you know, I just think it's, it's just, you have so many great wrestlers. Uh, and, and then when they're put in this like six man tag team division, it's just, uh, it's just, to me, it's just something different. It just gives the audience something different, uh, to watch, to, to, to get invested into. And, uh, you know, and I just think it's, it's, and it's become a crucial part of ring of honor. You know what I mean? I think it's been a very uh, crucial part of ring of honor recently with the six man tag team matches. Um, you know, I've been, geez, God, I've been in so many within the past, like what, two years. And like I said, it's only growing and it's going to keep growing. And I think the, I think the ring of honor fans like really enjoy it. Um, from you know, that's just my personal opinion, and again, it's just it's just something different. I, I just feel like Ring of Honor offers a lot of different stuff for for wrestling fans to enjoy. So, and I and I think that's gonna keep growing, you know, and uh, 
you know, it's, it's just that, that's just my opinion. I just think it's, it's something different uh, having those six man tag matches. You know, because you can do there's so many different ways you can do them too. So combinations, it, you know, right? Yeah. Creative ways. Yeah, yeah, a lot of different combinations of like different like fantastic talents out there. You know what I mean? Where it just makes it you know that much you know entertaining or better, however you want to word it. Um, so yeah, I just think it's, it's really cool. It's really and it's going to get bigger. You know, it's going to keep growing because you can feel it. You know, I've been like I said, I've been involved for the past two years, and you could just feel it growing. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's it's really cool. You can see a lot of dissension in the ranks uh, uh, among some people. We just told you before uh, we came on air that there's a lot of dissension in the ranks between me and the trendsetter here, and we don't get along uh, really well. Yeah, you're going to air out dirty laundry, I'm gonna air it out Seriously, here. there's another team, there's another faction that's got a little bit of dissension in, in the ranks, and that is a Bullet Club. No matter how many times Cody says that they're fine, your leadership under Matt Taven, or is, is there like one certain leader, or do you all have uh, do you all have your say? What makes the kingdom so successful and a uh, a force right now, or a cohesive unit? Um, you know, the kingdom uh, is is very special in its own way um, because we're we're all actual we're we're very close uh, outside of uh, pro wrestling and in pro wrestling. Uh, the whole kingdom, like me and Matt Taven, started together in in training. You know, we're talking like. 10 years ago. So a decade ago, me and Matt actually started wrestling and training under Spike Dudley together. So we've been close friends since then. And then, you know, you know, even, 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 you know, Michael Bennett and Mario around that time. And, and then TK came in later, all at the same like school and area. And we've all been very close. And so the, the kingdom is very natural. Um, the connection with the kingdom. And as far as like, uh, leadership, uh, Taven being the leader of the kingdom. Uh, it, you know, we, Taven is the leader of the kingdom, but we also, you know, because we have that same, uh, mentality coming from the same training background and it just, you know, knowing each other so well, we all kind of have the same kind of mindset, like going into certain things. Um, now granted most people, you know, some people always have like a different opinion on certain things. And, and, you know, as do we, but, you know, if, if my opinion is different from Taven's, usually it's something that he's like, Oh yeah, I'll agree with that. Or, you know, vice versa. Uh, you know, it, Taven is, uh, ultimately the, the shot caller, but usually like any ideas that, uh, come from myself or TK, are usually something that Taven would think of anyways. So it kind of, you know what I mean? We all have the same, that same mindset. And another thing that's really special about the kingdom is that us being a, you know, a three person faction there, we are all, um, we all have the ability to be singles wrestlers. We all have the ability to tag with whomever. It could be me and Taven. It could be me and TK. It could be TK and Taven. It could be me by myself, uh, be TK by himself, Matt by himself. And we all have like, I think distinct, our own distinct personalities and, I think we, you know, we're we're fine whichever direction you put us in. We're, there's not there's not a struggle or anything with anything that we do. Um, so the kingdom is very strong. Jeez, Vinny, I envy you. I wish I wish the Jersey Rank crew was as strong as the kingdom is right now. Because here's the thing: you you <laughs> guys are all like minded people. I couldn't be more opposite than Jeff, and I can't believe I chose him as a tag team partner. But again, maybe that little fire between us, that little rift, which sometimes I just want to slap him in the face, works for us. I guess in a way, it makes good for good radio. <laughs> But um, uh-huh, you know, give him a red, give him a red, give him just give him a red balloon. He'll be happy. Yeah, give him a red balloon and just. <laughs> oh, he hates clowns. Jeff is completely afraid. He's he's afraid of Ronald McDonald. So it's yeah, like yeah, not, you know, not, yeah, bad experience as a kid though. But uh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, but, Ronald McDonald is kind of terrifying, to be honest with you. I, I find him more terrifying than I do it. it so. yeah. <laughs> no, that's true, exactly. But uh, again, you know, all, all good things come to those that wait, and uh, I will be waiting for my moment. It's all about moments, right? You, you wait for your particular right. spots, especially in professional right. wrestling. And what I, what I, what I want right. to kind of touch a base upon you, Vinny, is that you kind, of, you kind of spoke about it when you are talking about the kingdom, right? And how you guys are all like-minded people, but you all, are, all have your own identity as well. Talk about Ring of Honor, and you, you said how, like, for example, well, this is going to be the biggest card, uh, most likely next year, WrestleMania, and the final one after that. It's going to continue to grow and grow. 
Can you talk to me a little bit about the identity of Ring of Honor? Because it seems like, at least for me and Jeff and I, we've talked about in 2017, how it feels internally from a fan standpoint. I don't know what it's like for a performer. It seems like there's this huge boom in wrestling right now. And it's just continued on, especially in 2018. What's the identity for somebody you'd think, the identity that Ring of Honor sets for itself that separates it from all the other promotions out there? Um, there's... Uh... I just think that ring of honor, uh, you know, we're, we, we, we have, uh, we, ring of honor has a little bit more of an edge, I guess you could say. I don't know if you guys agree with that. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, so I just think with that, with, you know, that's what kind of separates us from everything else is we're like, you know, and, and the thing about ring of honor, that's so cool. And that I love about it, especially recently is you get, you get a little bit of everything, you know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of cool. You get a little bit of everything you get, you, you know, there, you can get comedy, you can get, um, you can get, you know, your hardcore, you can get your, your just your overall entertainment, you can get your wrestling, you can get your, all your high risk stuff that you enjoy. You get, you know, you get a little bit, it's, it's as a package as a whole, I just feel like ring of honor is just like a complete show. You know what I mean? There's something for everybody to enjoy on a ring of honor event. And, uh, you know, like I said, it when and Ring of Honor having that edge, I think is just what makes it, you know, a little bit different than everything else. You know what I mean? Because we can we can have that that edge and keep that edge, and I, and I think that is just something that you know fans can kind of and you know be entertained by. And like I said, there's there's different there's different uh, there's there's different and and like Ring of Honor has very like different. Uh, the, you know, with the wrestling and the different characters and the different, you know, personalities and different, the, the dramas that are going in, you know, going around between like, you know, the, the Bullet Club stuff and then like, you know, the, us with the Kingdom Conspiracy having to deal with that, you know, and it's just, just a lot of stuff to kind of like, you know, really, really get invested with and, and I just, I just feel like, yeah, it just has that like that different edge, you know. I don't know if you guys agree with me on that. No, Vinny, um, I think but it just has, yeah, it just has that like, you know, that that different edge to it. Well, not only does it have an edge in terms of the product, Vinny, but I think, you know, for me, I've been very lucky enough to see a couple of Ring of Honor events now recently with Jeff. Uh, I didn't choose Jeff to come with me. He just tagged along for some reason. Uh, and it really feels like everybody has a chip on their shoulder, too. Like, everybody has something to prove. It, it feels like nobody's there trying to rest on their laurels. Everybody's trying to kind of steal the show. And you get, you, yeah. you sense that from the fans' point of view. I mean, do you sense that in the locker room, too, that everyone wants to go out there and say, top that type of mentality? Uh, every Everybody, you know, it just comes down to everybody just wants to go out there and, and be the best that possibly can be. You know what I mean? No, there, There's not a single... There's not a single person there that does not work hard. You know what I mean? Like everybody's out there to to be, to, to be the absolute best. You know what I mean? And and I and I think uh, I think that's the way it should be. You know what I mean? I, I absolutely agree with that. So I, that's what I, I just think it's that. I just think I don't think it's so much like oh well, you know like top that. You know what I mean? I think it's more just like you know let let's let's you know, we're going to go out there and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to kill it. And then we're going to go out there and we're going to kill it. And, and you know, and this is going to be the, the best show uh, that that this audience has ever seen. It's more like a, a teamwork mentality, right? It's all like a, like a team, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, I just think, I just think that's everybody's mentality. It was just yeah. like, you know, we want to go out there. We want to be the absolute best. That's it. You know? How about creative wise? Do you think, uh, for example, Ring of Honor lets you guys be more creative as far as other companies? Do you guys feel like you uh, can, you know, put your ideas out there and you're not going to, you know, hear the no, you know, or are you going to be able to allow yourselves to uh, work on your persona more freely than you could in other places? I mean, I I haven't really had, uh, I don't have any complaints about that. I mean, everything that I've ever done uh, that you've seen, is, is pretty much, you know, who I am or who we are as a unit. So, you know, it's been pretty, you know, cause I mean, that's who we are, you yeah. know? So it's just kind of, there's no, you know, so we've never really had a problem with anything like that. 
Oh yeah. Oh, I'm saying though, creativity is uh is good to have. Like like Ring of Honor allows you guys oh, yeah. to be creative. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, no. That's yeah, from, from, that's, from yeah, what yeah, I've absolutely. seen, it's like an open forum. Basically, they're open yeah. to your ideas because they're like, hey, you guys have gone this far with it. Then you guys, we trust you. Oh, go, yeah. go the rest of the way. You're not going to hear a lot of yeah, you know, yeah. nitpicking from us. Well, what I'm trying. Well, no, I'm no, trying, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to be more clear, like you know, not like WWE where they're like, you know, well, you can't try this or whatever. I'm saying Ring of Honor allows you to be creative, right? Right, yeah, 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 and I'm not too sure what goes on anywhere else, but yeah. like, like at Ring of Honor, there's, you know, they 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 give us, you know, uh, all the creative freedom that we, you know, could possibly want. Vinny, uh, two part question here, real quick. Uh, basically, you know, I, I'd spoken about before that, you know, it seems like there's so much more content out there, and all the content of professional wrestling seems to be so much more accessible. A lot to do with social media and, and, and vehicles like YouTube, for example, right, where you can get your content out there mm-hmm. and share it with so many other people. From a, from a performer standpoint, can you just kind of elaborate from your own experiences uh, how vital social media has been for you? Because basically, it is a business. It's not that you're going yeah. to business for yourself, but you're trying to market and brand yourself out there because, hey, you you gotta you gotta pay the bills, right? So when you see pl- teams like, for example, the Young Bucks, who I, done, I think have done an amazing job with branding themselves and marketing themselves, so how 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 a vital tool is it for not just any business, but specifically professional wrestling yourself to use tools like social media to brand yourself and market yourself out there? And with that being said, do you feel right now more than ever, it's just a great time to be in the business if you're young and up and comer or you're trying to, for example, reinvent yourself because you have these tools to be able to branch out and not necessarily have a, a machine behind you to kind of do it for you? Yeah, uh, I think, I think you know, uh, social media is uh, very important, especially now. And I think right now it's a fantastic time for anybody in professional wrestling, you know, uh, whether you've been in it for a while or you're a new up and comer starting off, uh, it doesn't matter. I think it's a fantastic time. Um, and it's, it's, it's cool to see like, you know, a lot of people kind of helping each other out. Um, you know what I mean? And, and, and kind of, and, and being able to have that, uh, like we just talked, have that creative freedom to kind of, you know, build their brand or, you know, put themselves out there. Um, I think social media is like a, a huge thing. Um, I use it a lot. Um, it really like helps me kind of like, you know, it just kind of helps you, you know, promote where you are or promote where, uh, you know, what, what your next t-shirt is or what your, you know, your match or whatever it is. Like, we, you know, the kingdom, we have our own little like, uh, you know, videos and stuff that we do and we put them on the YouTube channels and like, you know, people kind of, like, you know, they, they get invested into them and they follow them and kind of wait for us to come out with the next one. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like, I think, I think social media, especially today is just like a crucial part of, of just entertainment alone. You know what I mean? I just think it's like, it, you know, big in the en- entertainment industry alone where you could really like put your brand out there and get, and get people to kind of, kind of, you know, invest in it and get to know a little bit more about, um, you or your character or whatever it is that you're trying to put out there and brand. Um, I, I think it's, you know, uh, a huge thing. Um, and I, th- and I think it helps people that like are just kind of starting off. It helps them a little more, um, when they, when they come in, you know, when I first started wrestling that, you know, social media wasn't really like a huge thing at the time. It kind of like became like bigger as I was like, kind of like, you know, coming up and wrestling. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I always think too, like I'm not the greatest on social media. Um, None and I of think us are really. That, I really... <laughs> no, yeah, there's, there's some yeah, good ones. So. We've there's got some like... good ones, exactly. But those are the few exceptions to it, exactly. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. So it's kind of like you know, um, but you know, I, 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 I love using it. I think, I think it's like, like I said, I think it helps me a bunch, and I just like to give, uh, you know, fans and stuff, or you know, who are, you know, kind of like a a feel for what, you know, the horror King is and, you know, they can kind of get that through my social media, um, and understand it and, and whatnot. So I think, yeah, I think it's a crucial part of, of the industry. And like I said, in our entertainment as a whole, but it's, you know, especially pro wrestling right now. Yes. Thank God. It's we a great have time in pro wrestling. Great a, time. A great time. Vinny, I couldn't agree with you more. And thank God we're past the times of tape trading. Cause that was, I, that was killing me back in my time, you know, the whole VHS tape that, you know, it was, it was horrible, but it's saying that's the only way you could get your content right, out there right, is tape right. trading. 
Yeah, now you have chat. now you yeah. have your uh, virtual uh, business card, right? You can just hey, you know, go to my YouTube, go to my Twitter, and uh, you want to know more about me? I'm right there. So it's so it's very good, and uh, you know, you know, doing that opens. Yeah, it's cool because yeah. like, and then you have like all those like those gifs and stuff, and those, <laughs> yeah. they're like mini movie. They're, they're like mini movies. You know what I mean? So it's kind of cool. There's a lot of cool stuff out there now in social media. That's kind of like, you know, it just you know it helps. Uh, you know, by far. Let me ask you this, you know, the days now where like everybody's vlogging nowadays, it seems like everybody has a camera, especially like a 13 year old kid has, you know, a million followers for some reason. He's just kind of going back and forth eating cereal for some strange reason. I think vlogging is so <laughs> cool now because like, you have a chance to kind of show a behind the scenes because, you know, the days of kayfabe, I kind of feel are kind of over. I mean, you know, the audience kind of goes behind the curtain a little bit to an extent. And so it's great for you guys to market yourselves to be to be put out there. So, you know, with that being said, it's like, it's just a great way of, of people. I always feel if they can invest in you as a human being and root for you, regardless whether they boo you or they cheer you, they're going to be behind you 100%. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Because like, it, it's like, it's just being like relatable. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like people want to be able to sort of like relate, like what it is that you like or do. So I think it's just, you know, showing people things that they can relate to or, or giving them stuff that they're like, Oh yeah, I, I like that too. Or, you know, or I do that too or whatever it is. I just think it like kind of gets them to, to be a little more invested into like, you know, what, what they like or, or who they like or whatever it is. Yeah. So, you yeah. check out Vinny yeah. like, Hey, this I guy agree. likes horror movies. So do I. That's the yeah, best exactly. way. Yeah, exactly. That, that... You know, I, I've actually had, uh, several, um, people that just like like the horror genre that have just kind of like <laughs> uh transferred over to watch ring of honor because of just uh, you know the horror itself the horror king so it's just you know yeah it's stuff like that that like yeah i love horror and i love wrestling you know what's you know that's pretty cool you know so it's kind of you know and that's what i love you know what i mean i love pro wrestling and i love horror you know so it's kind of you know there's, there's there's people just like me out there so it's, it's kind of you know it's cool I think wrestlers, when they, you know, the best way they get over is like, like relatability. So I think that's why social media is so important and so good because you can relate to, uh, to the wrestlers because you can, hey, they're just, you know, normal guys just like me, except, you know, they're on this platform uh, where you can watch them, uh, you know, do their thing in the wrestling ring. But uh, it's opened a lot of doors for you uh, as far as uh, not only being a professional wrestler, uh, but also now, for example, you are uh, a film that's being actually in current production. Uh, you play a psychopathic killer named Damon uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. in the movie The Find. So uh, how far is this from the real guy? <laughs> <laughs> Not that far, actually. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I don't think we want to know um, the answer to that question, but you, you kind of answered yeah. it right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and that and that alone is just like, you know, uh, that was also another thing that, like, I kind of, you know, since I was a kid, I've been wanting to do. Um, when I was a kid, um, geez, I mean, like, six years old, I'm running around, like, in a, in a Jason mask instead of playing with, like, toy, like, G.I. Joes. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mom was like a huge horror fan and like, and she had me probably watch it a little bit too earlier than I probably should as a young kid. <laughs> um, but, uh, no harm, no foul. You know, basically. But, yeah. yeah. But you know, she'd always like, we always talk about it even currently. Like she'd always tell me like, you know, cause my daughter, like me and my wife, we have tons of used, um, horror movie props, screen use props in our home. So it's kind of like, it's like a, almost like a mini like horror museum in our home. And I have a three-year-old daughter, and she can name you like Jason, Michael Myers, Freddy, all, all nice. right now at three years old. But like, she's not really afraid of the movies. She gets afraid of them sometimes, but I do the same thing. Like me and my mother always talk. Like, it's it's fake. It's not real. It's not real. Now I'm not saying I sit my three-year-old daughter down and have her watch Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? She's she's watching like Moana and all her like kid stuff. But like, if it happens to be on because me and my wife watch it and she sees it and she gets a little afraid of it. We just have to tell her, you know, like, oh, you know, don't worry. It's not real. It's not real. And then yeah. she becomes more comfortable with it. Um, and that's how kind of like my mother was with me. And she, she was, I'm just like, I've always been into horror, like huge. Like I collect a bunch of horror memorabilia. And for years and years and years, uh, with the same time of being in love with wrestling, I always like loved horror movies. And I was like always wanting to be in a horror movie. So once the, the horror king kind of developed in wrestling, um, I uh, got you know, I got a call from David Gear, who is a producer and a director within the Rhode Island area, and he works on a lot of like big films. 
uh, you know, out of this area. And he just, you know, he said, I have this horror movie um, called The Find. Uh, and I wanted to know if he wanted to be the killer in it. And here's a script. I didn't even really need to read the script. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A killer in a horror movie. Yeah. You can just not send me the script and not just be there. Uh, but, you know, I, he sent me the script and, uh, you know, I read it, of course, because I'm into that stuff. And I, it was just, it was great. And I couldn't wait for it. And then it was like, you know, I spent like almost two weeks on on site and just filming and we still got a couple more days left actually and uh yeah it was a a great time and like the character damon um isn't too far off from like the horror king with the mask and and all that stuff so it was just like it was cool it was really cool to do and like the feeling of the movie has a very like um i guess you you could say like like a scream you know like like uh like a, a scream feel to it, you know, where these like, it's a, a bunch of um, college kids that end up at this big uh, a mansion they rent out on like uh, winter break or something like that. It's like winter break. Yeah. Winter break. And they, they rent out this house, this mansion. And I'm, I'm part of like an old, like uh, Indian ancient tribe, um, but I'm more modern day, but I'm connected to that tribe that was kind of like in that area. And I'm in search for this ring that I believe is in this house in this mansion because they have a bunch Mm of, um, a bunch of different things from that time that are in like the, the study hall relics basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the wall, like a photo that it was from back in that time or whatever. And I believe that this ring is, is propped there, uh, for display. So I'm going there to get this ring but obviously in the mix, these kids are renting out this mansion, which then I go for the search for the ring and they ended up running into Damon. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It, it actually comes out this Halloween, um, which I'm really excited for. I'm excited for the premiere. It's going to be really cool. So yeah, that was definitely a, a pretty awesome thing. And I'm actually just, I literally just got back today, um, um, on another film, um, called the vault um which is it's a very like italian mobster movie um it has like um uh chaz uh Pel- there. yeah oh nice yep from 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 bronx tile they got a uh, uh vincent pastero there from uh um whatchamacallit that show there uh oh, sopranos got him yeah sopranos yeah. that's it um, yeah, so there's uh, Don Johnson's in it from Miami Vice. So oh my god, you got, awesome. you got like the trifecta here. You're working with like, yeah. oh man, yeah, the life yeah, doesn't so get much better awesome. than that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, so it's pretty awesome. So I, I did that today. I kind of went there for like sizing for like, um, like the wardrobe and, and kind of went over like makeup stuff. And then I start filming on Tuesday. So that's, a, that's the next film that I'm going to be working on. So it's, pr- it's pretty awesome. It's a kind of out of my genre because, uh, you know, I love horror, um, mm-hmm. but you know, um, it's still, it's still going to be great and fantastic working on something a little different and working with those guys is even cooler. Cause uh, Bronx tale outside the genre of horror Bronx tale is probably one of my favorite movies. So. Oh, pretty right awesome there. definitely one of my favorites as well do you think wrestling yeah. helped you get into uh, has helped you become uh refine your acting skills or or which one's harder uh wrestling or acting like uh, just talk about how you incorporate the two or has you know which which one's easier or harder <sighs> i think they're both hard <laughs> like they, they really are um they're both hard uh, both kind of a lot of like sitting around too and waiting and just having that like, you know, back and forth, like that anxiety of just kind of like, oh, you know what I mean? Just like anxious to like kind of go out there and do it kind of thing. You know, it's kind of like, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're both kind of pretty equal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, re- wrestling uh, being, you know, a, a little bit more dangerous, you know what I mean? But um, as far as like, you know, everything else, uh, it's, it's, I, I mean, I, I, I feel personally that it's like very much the same. Um, that's just my opinion. And I think, I think it helps you. Uh, they both help each other out. You know what I'm saying? If you're involved exactly. with both, it like yeah. helps you. And yeah, it helps you like whether you're in the movies or you're in the, you know, the ring, I think they both help out each other. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be in, involved with both. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm pretty, pretty grateful for that. 
Yeah, I mean, if I had to make the comparisons and I'm just from the outside looking in, I would think probably wrestling is harder just because there is no second take. <laughs> it's, True. You, right. can't, you can't call right, right, cut. Right. You know, I'm in. I'm in yeah, the air. Like said, got, You're not gonna yeah, catch got, me. I I can't pause myself in midair and reset myself. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, the, well, that's why I said, yeah, it's it's, a, it's more dangerous, my friend. You got to be like very careful, um, and and just you know, kind of know what you're doing. So, um, by far, yeah. Now you spoke of the dangers. Obviously, I mean, you you, you walk into the business uh, as a fan. You love wrestling, right? So you watch it. So you kind of know what you're getting yourself into, right? When when you say, "Hey, I wanna I wanna try out to become a pro- professional wrestler," isn't the ideal thing? And I always make the comment to Jeff when we have talent, much like yourself on the show, and we're very grateful to have you on the show. Is that you know I we live vicariously through you guys. If if wrestling was that easy, then everyone would do it. But not everybody can. It takes a special type of individual, a man or female to go in there and do it so that being said when when you go out there and perform right to me i always find this so um interesting from my perspective because what do you do to keep yourself as healthy as possible because i I like to think back in the old days like i'm an old man right now that it was all about (laughs) the daily grind continually working book as many times you can and your body kind of calluses up I spoke to certain talent recently that say, you know what, it's now about training a little bit differently. It's maybe about resting the body and, and really paying attention to taking care of the body first rather than kind of dragging it through uh, a long period of, of stretch of time, which are, you know, people want to extend their career for as long as possible. For you, what do you do to keep yourself not only physically sharp, but, uh, but physically as well? Um, well, I, I like that line too. If 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 it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. That's actually yeah. from A League of Their Own. Tom yes. Hanks. Yeah, yeah. Tom Tom Hanks' line. It's League the of their hard own. that That's makes a, it great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which and, looking uh, back at now could have been taken the wrong way, but you know. <laughs> um, I won't dive into that unless you continue. But yeah, it's, if it was that easy, um, everybody would do it. Though you're right. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. I. I just. I mean. I. First of all, I have. Uh. uh a trainer, a personal trainer that trains me, um, during the week, uh, for, for, you know, just to kind of keep me strong. Um, and you know, I, I kind of need that, you know, I was never like, you know, I'm not, I was never like in the fitness industry. You know, you have some wrestlers that kind of like worked in the fitness industry or whatever it is. Um, I, I can work out and I know how to work out without a trainer, but I just think that having a trainer that's actually really, uh, that that's like his life. You know what I mean? Like that's all he knows and all he does. I just think it's a big help to me because he can push me to the next level. Like I want to, I want to keep being pushed to the next level and continue to get stronger and stay healthier. And, you know, he sends me my, 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 uh, diet regimen to follow. So I do that. Um, obviously before any performance I go out there, I stretch a lot. Um, I even stretch at home, um, I do have, um, some shoulder problems in my right shoulder, which I, you know, when I, whenever I compete, um, I try to be smart about it and try to avoid anything that's going to, you know, affect that, that shoulder. Um, it's gotten a lot stronger. Um, I had to do some physical therapy like a while back. Um, and it's gotten a lot stronger and it's in like, again, I go back to like having the trainer and he's, he knows about that and, you know, he makes sure that he focuses on that to, to make it stronger. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of, you know, uh, it's a lot of just kind of understanding your body and knowing what you should do and shouldn't do. And just, you know, trying to stay as healthy as you possibly can. Um, so yeah, so I do a lot of that and like, you know, the, having a trainer has helped me like by far. So, and then like, you know, like I said, I stretch before every event, um, even after sometimes, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot, but, uh, you know, I love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. So, we we're talking, of course, to the horror king, Vinny Marsalia. One final one for me is: Can you believe it? Though we're almost we're a quarter past now the the year. You know, can you believe that 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 we are? Yeah, I uh, know. It, the 2018 is 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 you know almost almost halfway done, kind of. You know, we're at the past the quarter <laughs> point. Yeah. Shut up, Jeff. I'm Great. getting old. <laughs> you know, so what does the rest of 2018? What does the future hold? For the kingdom, I mean, obviously, you know, we would have loved to see you at uh, Supercard of Honor in this six-man tag team match for, to regain your championships. But what does the rest of 2018? What do you guys, uh, you know, see the future for you guys for the rest of 2018? 
Um, well, right now our focus is uh, killing the conspiracy. That's like what we're focused on right now. Uh, we, we, we want our six man tag titles back. Yeah. That's, you know, that's our main focus. Our main goal right now in ring of honor is to get a fair match for our six man tag titles and win them back. That's, I mean, I, I, you know what I mean? There's nothing even, there's nothing further than that right now. That's, that's between myself, between Matt Taven, between TK Orion. We want our six man tag titles back. We want the conspiracy at ring of honor to end and we want our fair shot. So, and I think at this point we deserve it. Yeah, you definitely deserve. And you know, here's the thing, I, I, Vinny, I don't like to say the word deserve. You guys have earned your opportunity. I feel you've had an so. amazing 2017 and earned. 2018 has been. There you yeah. Go. yeah, you guys have earned it because of all the hard work you guys have done to reach to this point, and hopefully something happens around this time that you guys get that opportunity. And one of the largest audiences that's going to see Ring of Honor Supercard in New Orleans, as I call it. Um, one final one for me, Vinny, and uh, you know, this is more of the artsy fartsy sappy side of me that I always love asking the talent because I know what it's like being a fan and watching you guys perform, admiring what you guys do. What's it like for you? Meaning that you know, in this crazy thing that Jeff and I are doing here, trying to build ourselves, trying to mark ourselves, brand ourselves, it's really easy for us to first of all lose sleep and second to kind of you know worry so much about getting to a certain point in our careers and not enjoy the journey at hand do you have that ability do you have that ability now or are you just in the moment right now we don't have you you don't want to get lost in it basically do you have the ability of kind of stepping back and, and reflecting reflecting on being part of such a, a great company like ring of honor and, and being part of the kingdom yeah, I mean, I, I like to kind of just, like, take things as they go. It's funny because, like, Matt is always, like, Matt's kind of like an older brother to me. Um, he's, a little, he's a, like, a year older than I am. And, like, you know, even in wrestling, he's, like, a year older than I am. Like, he, he started a year ahead of me. And, like, he, he you know, we always kind of joke about I'm the one that just kind of, like, all right, whatever's next. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just like to kind of I, – I really do. I like to kind of just kind of – take it as it goes and I, I really do like to try to try to I try to instead of like thinking a mile a minute <laughs> and like like I'd like to kind of take a step back like you said and just kind of like wow like this is you know this is pretty cool you know what I mean I'm I'm wrestling around the world with my best friends I'm you know in you know ring of honor right now which is like on such an on such a uh uphill right now it's just like you know it's the greatest company out there as far as i'm concerned and i'm you know a part of that and you know what i mean it just i like to kind of just sit back and just like realize and and be grateful that i'm a part of that you know i i'm i'm more than grateful to be a part of that it's it's just an awesome thing um you know because i'm I'm a wrestling fan just like everybody else you know what i mean so it's kind of it's very cool to, to to be a part of that so and yeah. uh, any last messages for whoever comes out victorious for your six man tag team championships? I'm sorry, what was that? Any message for uh, for whoever comes out victorious for the uh, six man tag team championships? Whoever comes out victorious, do you have any message? Uh, I mean, I think they know the message. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, you guys probably, you know what I mean? They know the message. Yeah. Like, enjoy it. You know what I mean? Because we're coming lasts, after right? the six-man tag titles, no matter who it is, Bullet Club, SoCal Uncensored, either one of them, we're coming after our six-man tag titles. And there's nothing that Bully Ray can do to stop it. You uh, are... he's, already, he's already tried. He's already tried. Yeah, I know. Uh, Vinny, thank you so much, man. We can find you on Twitter at the Horror King VM, also on Facebook.com slash Vinny Marcellia Official. And uh, also on Instagram, the Horror King official. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Great getting to know you uh, again. It's travesty thank that you. you will not be at Supercard of Honor, but we, uh, we don't know that yet. Uh, like I said, I, I'm you know, listen. I have a feeling. It's got a feeling that they're gonna make their presence felt. But thank you so much, Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, uh, April the seventh from New Orleans. It's gonna be a great weekend, and uh, we got a feeling that the uh, kingdom will make their presence felt. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me.